Can you guys hear me? Yeah, the microphone is working. Okay, great. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, great conference, eh? Uh, my name is Loris uh, De Giovanni. I'm the CEO uh, of uh, a company called Sysdig. We do container uh, visibility and, and performance monitoring. We also uh, created, and I'm the creator and one of the main contributors of an open source uh, tool for container visibility called Sysdig. My talk today is going to be around container visibility. In the past, by the way, I've, I've been involved with open source for uh, 15 years at this point. Uh, I was uh, uh, one of the creators of tools like uh, WinPickup, and my previous company was the company behind uh, uh, Wireshark, a uh, network analyzer that some of you might, might have heard of. Um, containers are uh, great. Uh, these slides, as some of you know, some features that make, uh, make them great, less overhead, faster deployments, uh, uh, reproducibility of environments, uh, cost optimization, isolation, flexibility, and so on. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, most of the people in the audience today uh, are really like them and are really excited about them. But they also uh, have some limitations. One of, one of them is uh, Inspecting containers and you know monitoring them, seeing what's happening inside containers, tend to be not uh, super straightforward. At least at this point, containers are really you know a technology that is uh, under heavy development, uh, and some of the features that make, make container great, uh, containers great, like uh, the fact that they are uh, isolated, self-contained, uh, simple, lightweight. Well, all, all of this also makes uh, visibility and monitoring and, tr and troubleshooting uh, a bit more challenging. So uh, this talk uh, is based on a question, can monitoring and troubleshooting respect these properties that I have on the, on the slide? So can we leverage the fact that uh, uh, containers bring uh, you know, this new way of doing things and leverage it in a way to also make uh, monitoring better? So uh, essentially, in a situation like this, in which your container ship is, sink is sinking, you probably want to avoid to be this guy, right? Uh, <laughs> sitting there uh, and uh, drinking something while uh, you don't really know what's happening, what's happening there. Uh, so the rest of uh, my talk is going to uh, explore. Uh, Different things that, uh, different options that we have uh, to monitor different things in containers, starting from uh, you know command line tools uh, and uh, and other options in the open source. This is focused on on mostly on open source. Uh, it will be uh, mostly uh, hands-on, so I will switch to my to my terminal and and, and try to do this interactively. So most of it is uh, uh, going to be interactive demos, but don't worry, I have uh, everything under control. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm sure, as in any interactive demo, everything will go perfectly well. Um, let's start with some of the things that we want to monitor. So uh, resource uh, uh, usage, CPU, memory, disk, network activity, file I.O., uh, error, faults, application, uh, activity and logs, uh, and topology. So let's start from the beginning. Uh, basic stuff, resource usage, CPU, memory, disk, and so on. What options do we have here uh, you know, uh, in, in, in the open source, especially, let's start from the command line. So uh, I can use uh, traditional tools like uh, PS, top, HTOP, and so on. So let's actually make this bigger. Uh, uh, when uh, I run like uh, something like uh, top in the host, I can actually see uh, the processes that are running inside containers because processes that are inside the containers are essentially wo operating in their own namespace and they are isolated and the resources are isolated through C groups, but you can still see them from the host. So like here I have uh, on my machine, you know, a set of containers that are running uh, 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 different things, and uh, uh, I can see like these py Python processes are running inside containers, but it's very hard to tell it with with top. At the same time, uh, on top I can click uh, on the F key, and somewhere like here there are C groups, 
So I can add the C group column to top. And as you can see now, uh, essentially, processes that are running inside uh, a specific container are sharing the same C groups, like, uh, right? So C groups is a, is a pretty long string. As you can see, this is, this is not very read readable. But if you're able to decode these, the, the processes that have the same C group uh, column are essentially operating in inside their own container. So uh, it's a way to do, to, do, to do that with top, not super friendly. Uh, Docker, uh, if you are using Docker, gives uh, uh, some commands uh, to, to do this. So I can do a Docker PS to see the list of uh, containers that are um, running on my machine. And then I can do a Docker top of uh, something like uh, service uh, node one, which is the container name. And I can uh, essentially get uh, the list of uh, processes that are running inside uh, that container. Uh, one thing that uh, not everybody knows is that uh, Docker top actually supports PS syntax. So I can you know, uh, use PS flags to, for example, show the CPU usage of the processes inside the container. So compared to top, which I showed before, uh, it's uh, a, a step ahead in terms of uh, uh, usability. Uh, what else do we have for? Um, container visibility uh, for metrics like CPU and so on. Uh, one thing that is uh, uh, pretty nice is C Advisor. So C Advisor is uh, actually um, from the command line uh, that you use to install it, you can probably guess what it's doing. It's mapping a lot of volumes in the host. So you deploy C Advisor as a container, which is nice. Uh, I believe that uh, this is. Uh, uh, actually the way to do contain container monitoring. When I was saying, you know, can we use containerization to improve monitoring? When you can uh, get visibility from a separate container, at that point it's very good because essentially you can segregate your visibility to something uh, that is uh, separate in your environment, and then you deploy visibility by just running, by just doing a Docker run, right? So this is what you do with the uh, uh, C Advisor, and the uh, C Advisor maps a lot of volumes in the in the uh, 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 host uh, running the containers, and then it, it offers a web in, uh, interface on port 8080. So if we go back here uh, and uh, we try to open that user interface, uh, as you can see, C Advisor gives me uh, a bunch of uh, uh, semi real time uh, uh, metrics uh, for, uh, for my host. But the interesting thing is that I can click on Docker containers and uh, I get a list of containers, I can pick one. And now I have uh, uh, CPU usage, uh, memory, uh, network uh, data, uh, network throughput for uh, uh, this, this specific container, file system utilization, and so on. So nice, uh, uh, nice user interface. Uh, uh, the uh, other advantages uh, of uh, C Advisor are it, it offers an API, uh, which also means there are integrations. So it's integrated with uh, InfluxDB, Prometheus, uh, Hipster. The Hipster integration in particular is uh, uh, useful because uh, Hipster is like the default collection, uh, metrics collection system for Kubernetes. So if you are deploying your microservice uh, uh, infrastructure on top of uh, 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 Kubernetes uh, C Advisor is like uh, nicely integrated with Kubernetes. At the same time, uh, the metrics that I show, showed you on the web page, that's it, you know, that's what you get. Uh, you, you don't really have more than like the overall CPU uh, of the container, memory, and so on. So the container is still very much uh, a black box. Um, Another uh, alternative is the Docker API, uh, especially Docker stats. So if I go to the command line, uh, I can uh, uh, do a Docker stats for the same container that, that I was inspecting before. And as you can see, it's a bit like, you know, top-like, uh, real-time uh, uh, updated metrics for that specific container. The useful thing about that, more than, you know, what you can see on the screen, is that uh, Docker exports everything uh, through an API, including this. So 
uh, you can you know, fetch this API uh, through the command line, and it, it gives you a JSON, which uh, a bunch of information uh, uh, for, for that container. But uh, again, you know, this is integrated, so if you are doing Docker monitoring uh, with, uh, like, for example, a commercial tool, uh, which is not uh, sysdig, uh, uh, you are probably consuming this API. There's uh, stuff like this project that I'm listing here, which is uh, a collect D plugin for the Docker set. So you can essentially run this and then export uh, this through collect D to an arbitrary backend. Uh, again, the metrics are, tend to be a bit richer than C advisor, but still, uh, like for a container, you get the overall CPU, not much more than that. Uh, and containers are still essentially black boxes, so you, you can't really see inside containers. Let's talk about sysdig, which is what uh, um, uh, a project that uh, I contribute to and which my company is the sponsor for. Um, sysdig is a tool to capture system events, uh, filter them, and run useful scripts. Uh, we often compare it to like S trace uh, plus TCP dump plus LSOF plus HTOP plus Lua. It's like we didn't have anything else to try here. Uh, but uh, it's sort of a combination of uh, all of these tools. It's scriptable, it's pretty powerful, uh, open source, of course, and uh, there's also a nice uh, uh, HTOP-like user interface for this. Uh, design goals for SysDig is uh, having it production ready, so having uh, very low overhead and keeping it as simple as possible. At the same time, rich data, uh, easy to use, natural workflow, and of course, native support for containers. How does it work? So this is a very simplified uh, uh, architecture of a container, uh, of, of a system running containers. So these are, there are a couple of native apps here and a couple of containers uh, running on Docker and one running on LXC. Uh, what uh, Sysdig does is uh, it has a little component that is installed at the op operating system uh, level. This component is able to intercept uh, what's, uh, 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 what uh, each of the processes and containers running on the machine uh, are doing, and especially the interaction with the uh, operating system. This information is uh, captured, uh, consumed by a separate container, and then uh, it can be used for both real real time analysis or uh, saved to a trace file, a bit like uh, with uh, you do with Wireshark, uh, and uh, uh, then analyzed uh, later. Let's uh, take a look. So, without uh, uh, any argument, sysdig gives uh, this beautiful and very useful output. Uh, and that's the end of the demo, thank you. <laughs> um, <the v> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, the first uh, uh, basic thing that you can do is apply filters. Again, I come from TCP dump and Wireshare tradition, so you can do something like uh, event.type uh, uh, equal open, and now we're seeing only uh, files that are details about the files that are opened in the system, inside or outside containers. Still, you know, a bit less detail, but still not very uh, useful. So let's uh, run uh, the Curses user interface. This is called CSysdig, it's installed together with CSysdig, and as you can see, it looks a lot like HTOP. I'm a big fan of HTOP, probably many of you use the tool. Uh, I use it all the time, I like it much bet better than TOP, so when developing this, uh, uh, I copied uh, not only the color scheme, but also the key bindings and everything. So if you use TOP, HTOP, you should be very familiar with something like this. It's uh, now, you know, real-time view, so basic and very similar to, to something like HTOP when you use it uh, just in this, uh, in this basic uh, configuration. At the same time, uh, I can uh, uh, use it to open trace files, which is something that uh, HTOP doesn't support. Uh, so I have a trace file here that I captured of a WordPress infrastructure running on containers, and I'm adding the PC command line, which uh, means print containers. And now, essentially, we are analyzing uh, eight seconds of activity of these machines, that uh, machine that was running uh, uh, the uh, WordPress infrastructure. A couple of things here. One is, as you can notice, I have the container column, so I can see all of the processes and how much CPU uh, they were using and how much I/O they were doing, how much uh, file, network, and so on, but I can uh, quickly associate them to the container they belong. Uh, the other thing is uh, I see the process ID, but I also have a column uh, for the internal PID. So, uh, 
as you know, like when I, when I run any, any tool uh, to inspect containers from the host or from another container, I see the external process ID for the container. While the container has name, true namespaces as a different local PID, which is what you usually are interested in because it's what's written in the logs, for example. And uh, um, the sysdig is able to show you the speed that, uh, for example, for this uh, MySQL container is one, because uh, that's the only thing that was running inside uh, that container. The other uh, main difference uh, uh, between these uh, and HTOP is that uh, uh, I can click on views, and uh, I get, uns unfortunately, the, the screen is cut, but I can get a list of other things that I can see in the system. So for example, example I can pick containers, and this gives me you know, the list of uh, containers that were running on, in, on that machine with the details like CPU utilization, uh, disk usage, uh, memory usage, network activity, and so on for the specific containers. Um, OK. Now, um, let's uh, uh, take a look at uh, uh, maybe seeing network acti activi activity for containers. So here again, we have uh, C Advisor, a as we saw, shows you know, the overall bytes uh, uh, sent and received uh, on the network by a container. Docker Stats does something pretty similar, but that's just you know, the num that number, nothing else. If you want to see like networking activity for a container, uh, you're essentially stuck with uh, attaching to, to the container, uh, installing uh, IFTOP or TCP dump or, or, or any other tool and, and, and you know, uh, execute uh, it uh, inside the container. With sysdig, on the other hand, uh, you can uh, uh, see the net network activity of a container from outside the container. So here we have uh, uh, our list of containers. Another big difference between sysdig and something like htop is that uh, it supports drill down. So here I have the list of containers. Uh, I can select one. I can click Enter. And now I'm inside the container, uh, which means that uh, I'm seeing the list of processes inside the container. But again, I can click on Views. And uh, I can get, uh, for example, the uh, top uh, uh, ports, uh, like server ports for the container. And unfortunately, you, can re you cannot read it. But uh, there's traffic on port 3306, which is my SQL, and port 80 for this container. I'm selecting 80. And now I see uh, the, uh, I can get connections. And I see the connections made by this container on port 80. Another difference between these and HTOP is that uh, uh, I can inspect, I can select an arbitrary connection, and I can click on the echo button, and let me actually convert it into a printable ASCII, and now I have the data that is sent and received. In, the, in this case, an HTTP request and the, and the corresponding HTTP response. I can go back, and I can dig inside the same connection. When I dig into it, essentially, there's a filter that shows me the all the details with nan nanosecond pre precisions of what happened in, in the specific connection. So uh, the accept uh, by the Apache process, uh, read and write, the data exchanged, uh, the close of the socket, the shutdown, and so on. So the idea is being able to go from the overall details of a, of, of a machine running containers into maybe even a specific connection, a specific thread or something like that with few mouse clicks and being able to do it in real time or on a trace file. Um, Disk activity. Again, here, you don't have many options other than sysdig. You can do IOTOP or LSOF, but you need to install them uh, uh, inside the container. Uh, with sysdig, I can go and uh, uh, go back uh, to the same container, and uh, uh, I can uh, do something like uh, drill down into it and then uh, look at the di directories. And I can, this is the list of directories that have been ex accessed in this container. Let's pick, for example, slash etc. And uh, we can see that the file here uh, that is accessed on slash etc is uh, uh, the host file. Again, I can echo it. And I see you know, which process. It's Apache 2 reading the file. And I can see actually the data that is being uh, read from this specific file. Another thing about. Uh, uh, file I.O. is, for example, error. So I'm going back to the whole machine, and I'm picking uh, in uh, um, uh, the errors view. So here, essentially, I have uh, uh, categorized all the system activity by errors, and I have a count of errors. And I can see E again is, is not a problem, because essentially it's uh, async 
processes uh, uh, doing doing timeouts, but this is file not found in you know, end. So let's drill down into it, and we can see that two processes are generating most of these errors. Uh, one is MySQL, and the other one is a API Server. Let's take a look at API Server. We can drill down into it uh, by doing dig, and we can see the specific file, which is applog.txt, which uh, this uh, 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 application running inside the container is keeping failing opening. So this is probably either the directory doesn't exist, or it's not writable, or something like that, and I can go and try, and try to fix it. Um, the uh, last thing that I want to show you is uh, being able to see stuff like uh, application activity and logs and so on. Docker offers a logging uh, infrastructure uh, at the same, uh, which uh, uh, on the other hand, either you pipe it to somewhere else or uh, it's uh, not super friendly and requires essentially the processes inside the containers to actually uh, write their logs to standard input and standard output. Uh, on the other hand, uh, with uh, Sysdig, Sysdig has the concept of chisels, which are little Lua scripts that you can write on top of Sysdig to process this information. One of these chisels, for example, is called, uh, um, let me, um, it's called SpyLogs. And this chisel essentially intercepts all the reads and writes to files that contain log in their name and then colors this based on the content of, uh, of what's, what's written, so that uh, something that contains error is, 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 is printed in, in, in red and so on. So here, for example, I can uh, start this chisel and then go uh, there and uh, restart, uh, for example, my microservice uh, uh, infrastructure. And uh, when I do that, as you can see, logs start appearing uh, on the screen, and I can see, you know, the different containers, and uh, uh, I have a, like a single tail for all the logs coming uh, from from all the different containers, and, and they can, you know, get it on the screen here or pipe it uh, uh, so somewhere else. Um, last thing that I want to show you is uh, uh, these. What I showed you uh, up to this point is uh, uh, our open source tool, which is designed to be a single machine. Uh, and uh, as you can see, very powerful for troubleshooting and deep down uh, and going inside the containers. Uh, at the same time, we uh, also collect uh, uh, the same information uh, in, in uh, our software as a service uh, product called SysD Cloud. SysD Cloud uh, captures the same f information, but the agent uh, uh, pipes this information to our backend so that it's possible, for example, to create uh, uh, stuff like this, which is a real time. Uh, a visualization of the same WordPress infrastructure running on different machines, uh, uh, which is uh, created auto automatically by essentially inspecting the network activity that each, each of the containers is doing. So uh, the uh, agent uh, here is installed on a physical machine, is able to see which containers are running on the machine, is able to understand what's running inside these containers, and then creates this topology real time for you. So here, for example, I can see a couple of tiers, clients, uh, load balancer, we are on Amazon here, so uh, ELB, uh, front-end tier with three machines. Uh, I can see it from the number three here. Uh, what I can do is I can use my mouse to zoom inside it, and now I can see the three machines. I can keep zooming, and uh, it's a bit like Google Maps for your infrastructure. Uh, now I'm uh, starting seeing the Docker containers inside the machi these machines and uh, how these Docker, Docker containers are talking to each other. This is not trivial to create because essentially Docker and many other you know, container and networking technologies create subnets here, but we're able to essentially stitch everything together uh, and, and also stitch how the things are connected from physical machine to physical machine. And here I see, for example, that uh, HA proxy is uh, sending requests to uh, four WordPress containers. I can keep zooming. And uh, uh, these, uh, you know, the containers explode, and I can see the processes. In this case, Apache 2 running inside these containers. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, this is in real time, supports history, and uh, it's like an example of what we can do by collecting this information uh, and without instrumenting any container and respecting the cleanliness of the containers, and at the same time, offer this kind of rich uh, visibility. 
that is uh, the end of my session. I have uh, 30 seconds left, so uh, I, guess, uh, I guess I'm done. Thank you for Thank listening you. to my presentation. We'll keep that tight.